Okay. Uh, I hope you can hear me, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So our next topic is the payback period. Now, this is a very simple method and very simple concept. There's nothing big in it. However, there are certain aspects that you need to remember. As far as calculation of payback period is concerned, it's very simple. It's simple subtraction and nothing else. Simple subtraction and addition and nothing else, right? So what is payback period? Can someone tell me? Does anybody know it about it? What a payback period is? So it's basically the break even time, I guess. Yes, you may you may say that, but uh, break even point is, uh, you know, a bit complex concept. But the uh, casually speaking, when we use the term break even, uh, we we use this thing in a very different context as a, as a layman. So according to that, yes. However, sir, I, I'm I, telling, would, I would like to sir, answer this question, sir. Sir, sir, please go ahead. Sir, actually, uh, payback period is is that period when uh, when we just receive some output. Uh, well, uh, break even is is uh, maybe maybe it it takes some time to just cover all the expenses and then after after that the profit will be starting. But uh, the payback period is one once we just started some output. I think this uh, the payback period will be just starting. No, no, no. Uh, uh, no, sir. Payback period is actually when you recover, answer, sir. sir. Hello. Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, I uh, I believe that payback period is the time in which we will get our original money back to our pockets. Very, very right. Very right. Who is this? May I know your name, please? I am Muhammad Jawad. Okay, Jawad. Well done. Well done. Uh, this is uh, this is exactly what the payback period is. Let's let's say I have invested ten thousand dollars or whatever it is today, and in let's say first year this is a project where or in which i have invested it right it could be anything let's say i've invested ten thousand uh, dollars in a business and from there from that business i'm getting some you know return now in first year let's say i was able to uh i was able to get let's say five thousand in second year again I was able to get other 5,000. And then in third year again, I got for 5,000, right? So what would be the payback period here? That means in how much time I will be able to recover my original investment. In this particular case, I would be, because you see all my incomes, they are fixed incomes, 5,000 every year. Isn't it? In this case, I would say, okay, 10,000. 10,000 was my original investment. And every year I'm getting 5,000 or every year I'm recovering or earning or saving 5,000. So it would take two years for me to recover this 10,000. Right? Any doubts about that? No doubt. No, sir. Right. So this is as simple as it is. This is the payback period. That's it. In simplest term, this is the payback period. However, there are certain, you know, dimensions to it that I need to teach you. And uh, there you will you will see a little bit of, you know, uh, a little bit of uh, advanced calculation. However, the basic concept remains the same. Basic concept is that in how much time you will be able to recover your original investment. Here we made an investment of 10,000 and every year I was getting a fixed, you know, saving or revenue uh, getting out of this business. So in this case, I was able to recover these 10,000 in first two years as, as some of you uh, were referring to this as break even. Yes. Casually speaking, we may call it as break even, right? But break even uh, has got some, uh, you know, advanced, uh, you know, concepts on that. But as for a layman, yes, this is the break even. And third year, in third year, whatever I will get, this will be my profit. 
right? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, but what if, but what <laughs> yes, if sir. my investments are not fixed? Here, uh, sorry, my return is not fixed. Let's say, again, the same example, 10,000, 10K. This is my original investment. But now, I'm not getting a fixed return every year. Rather, I'm getting a different return. Like in first year, let's say, I recovered 4,000. In second year, I recovered, let's say, 5,000. In third year, I recovered, let's say, 1,000. And in fourth year, let's say, I recovered 4,000, right? In this case, in this case, the return is not fixed. Like in the previous example that I just mentioned, the return was 5,000 every year. That was fixed. But here, sometimes I'm getting 4,000. Sometimes it's 5,000. Third year, in third year, it's 1,000. In fourth year, it's 4,000. So every time I'm getting a different return. Now, how to calculate payback period here? Look, in this, we just do the basic subtraction and that's it. For example, this is 10,000. This is my original investment on day zero. Let's say this is period or time here. Here, I have cash flows. Do you remember I talk about cash flows? What are cash flows? Did I tell you about that? This? Is in or out of the pocket is a cash flow. Very, very right. Very, very right. Very right, sir. Anything, any amount of money that is either coming into my pocket or it is going out of my pocket, we call it as cash flow. That means cash is flowing in or out of my pocket. If cash is coming into my pocket, I would call it as cash inflow. Correct? If yes. cash or amount is coming into my pocket, like all the sales that I would do. Let's say this was a store that I opened and now I'm doing some sales and I'm selling out some products. As a result, I'm getting some income. So sales, income, revenue, all these indicate that money or amount is coming into my pocket, right? So these cash flows would be called as cash inflows. Now, other thing as cash outflow, COFs. What is cash outflow? When cash is flowing out of my pocket, it is going out of my pocket. That means all the bills that I will pay, all the payments that I will make, all the purchases that I will do, in all these cases, the cash would be going out of my pocket. Correct? All the expenses, sir. Right? All the expenses, yes. So this is cash outflow. The first cash outflow, that is in our example, it is 10,000. This first cash outflow is called as initial cash outflow, correct? ICOF. Is it clear? Yes, sir. This is initial cash yes, outflow. Sir. Okay, so now you are driving, sir. Okay, <laughs> now initial cash outflow is the investment, it is the principal amount. It is the capital that is required to start the business, right? Or start a project. So initial amount that we invest, we may call it as principal amount. We may call it as investment. We may call it as initial cash outflow. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, so cash is either coming into our pocket. In that case, it would be called as cash inflow and or we will be doing some expense. And in that case, cash will be going out of our pocket. In that case, it will be called as cash outflow. The initial investment is called as initial cash out outflow or the investment or the principal amount. So now 
all the cash flows that are going out of our pocket, that means cash outflows, they are represented by a bracket sign around that or with a negative sign. Did we cover this point in the last lecture? I guess we did. Yes. Okay, fine. So initial, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm indicating it with a bracket sign here. So now let's go back to the concept that we were studying and that was, uh, let's say, sorry, let's say we invested $10,000 in a business and in one year, we, in the first year, we got 4,000. In second year, we got 5,000. In third year, we got 1,000. And then in fourth year, we recovered 4,000 from this business. Now, what next? We'll, we'll make a table here. On table, we'll have three columns mainly. One is time column, in which we'll mention that this is the number of, this is the year or the time period on which a particular cash flow was made, right? So here we'll have years or something. So this is year one, this is year two, this is year three, and then maybe year four here, correct? Any doubts? No, sir. Right, here we will write the cash flows. Now, the initial cash outflow was done on day zero. Obviously, that is 10,000. So we have put brackets around this. But for other cash flows, which are cash inflows here, 4,000. In second year, it is 5,000, correct? Then it is 1,000. And lastly, it is 4,000. Done? No confusion, no difficulty, I guess. Nothing technical so far. Okay, no, so the third column may contain anything, like we may say, we can call it anything. Let me plug in the charger, sorry. My laptop is draining. Okay, so here, third column can be called as anything. You can call it as cumulative, cumulative value. You can call it as the remaining amount, right? Or something. So now let's say on year, on, on day zero, we have just invested 10,000 here. So the remaining amount that is yet to be recovered is 10,000. We want to recover all of this amount from the business, obviously, and then we'll start making profits, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Now, in one year, I was able to recover 4,000 out of this 10,000. So how much amount is remaining now? Out of 10,000, <laughs> I have recovered 4,000. So now... 6k is still left right and it would be a negative value obviously in next year i recovered 5000 so now how much amount is still stuck in my business 5000 6000 minus 5000 1000 is still left 1, right 1000 1, right so in third year i was able to recover that 1000 too correct so now all of the amount has been recovered, correct? And the 4,000 that I earned in the fourth year is purely my profit, right? So what is the payback period? By definition, we studied that payback period is the time period which is required to recover the complete original investment. In this case, three years is the payback period. Right? I was able to recover all of my investment in three years. So my payback period here would be three years. Correct? Any doubts about it? No, sir. No, no. Uh, so you Correct? have not taken into consideration the time value of money. No. 
Oh, very right. Very good, sir. Very good. Uh, what's your name, sir? Sir, Umar Habib. Umar Habib, kindly uh, CR, please note down one mark for Umar Habib now. Uh, I'll explain this thing towards end of this lecture, right? Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, there's a slide on which we'll discuss this thing. So, uh, but well done, well done. Pointed out very well. So now, you see, the basic concept of payback period is the amount of time that is required to recover your complete investment. This is one thing. Now, there are two possibilities. One possibility is that after the original investment, we are getting a fixed amount of income every year. In that case, what we would do, we would just you know, divide the initial investment that we have with the amount, the fixed amount. Let's say I'm getting 2,000 every year. For next seven years, I'm getting 2,000 every year. Right. So here I would say, OK, 10,000 divided by 2000. That means I'll be able to recover this amount in how much time? Five years, obviously. Right. Is everybody right, with me? OK. Yeah. So this is this is a simplest way. However, if I'm not getting a fixed amount every year, rather I'm getting different values in that case i'll have to do that manual kind of calculation in which we'll prepare a table with us and we'll keep subtracting the amount that we earn every year from the amount that is still stuck in the business correct right. okay this is the total thing and now let's start studying this thing in a technical way or and try to understand different technical aspects of this topic. One of the aspects was just raised by Umar probably. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Umar? Umar? Tha, no? Yes, Umar. Umar. Umar, Umar who pointed out Umar said, we, yes, we are ignoring the time value of money. So yes, this is one of the technical points that you need to know about this topic, right? OK, we'll talk, talk about it later. But for now, let's uh, start with the basics. First thing, the payback period is the number of years, but not necessarily number of years. It is the amount of time that it takes to recover the initial investment. Correct? It could be less than one year even. So this is the amount of time that is required to recover the initial investment. Then now, as you see, that this is the easiest evaluation method to perform. Like you will study some advanced method. If you remember, I told you that I, I'll teach you four methods and payback period is the first method and then net present value, the profitability index or co benefit to cost ratio, the IRR, the internal rate of return. They are, are, are a bit advanced methods, but this is the basic level of method or basic level method. And that's why it is very easy to understand. It is very easy to perform as well. But theoretically, it is the worst method available. Why? One factor pointed out by Mr. Umar that it ignores the time value of money. Right? It is ignoring the time value of money. Do you remember in this example that I just showed you what we were saying? This is the amount, original amount, 10K. First year, I'm getting 5,000. Then I'm getting 4,000. Then I'm getting, let's say, 3,000 and so on. So, but this 3,000, this 4,000 is not in present value terms. Its worth would not be the same as 5,000 now. It was, would we not be the same as 4,000 now. Its worth would not be the same as 3,000 now. So, but we have just ignored it. We have kept things very simple. We have calculated the payback period in plain terms. Like, OK, assume that this is the 5,000. So, but practically, if you see, this is not a good approach, correct? Yes, sir. So, but still, this method is being used in various areas. Why? For example, now let me give you two or three examples here. For example, the business owner, the investor to whom I'm briefing this. So I'll get or we will get this return, right? 
Now, if that person to whom I'm explaining this, it could be a business owner, it could be a manager, he or she doesn't know about the advanced finance management concepts such as time value of money or the other methods. If that person is not aware of it, he or she doesn't have the required education to understand the time value of money concept. In that case, for a layman, this is the simplest method to understand and this is simplest method to brief to him or her. Correct? Agreed? Yes, sir. So this is the first scenario, first case in which we will be using this method. So if the business owner or if the manager to whom you are presenting this project proposal, if he or she is not aware of advanced finance management concepts, obviously payback period is a good method to be used. Done, ji? Ek baat. This is first thing. Okay, what about second? Second is, if the economy is very stable, in that case, the risk factor would be very low, right? If economy is very stable, in that case, risk factor as well as the devaluation of money or depreciation of the money would be very less. So, if everything is going stable, I would say, okay, 5,000 from one year now will not be affected much because economy is so stable, inflation is not there. So whatever we will get, like let's say 5,000 after one year, its value is almost equal to 5,000 even now. In that case too, this 4,000 would remain like 4,000 or maybe 3,950 or something. So the de depreciation is very low here. When economy is stable, when everything is you know stable in that case, the devaluation of money or depreciation of amount is not, you know, in that case, discount rates are very low actually, only 2%, 3% maybe. So because of that, the value or the amount of money that is being promised in future, it will not be reduced much. Is it clear? Yes. yes. So in that case too, payback period can be used easily. Danji. Third thing, let's say if the, amount, the time of investment is too short, like it is only one or two years, and I just want to check that when I will get my amount back in 10 months, in 13 months, in 18 months or what? In that case too, like within a period of one to two years, the amount, the future amounts will not be affected much. Like the rates would almost remain the same. If the investment is too short, obviously in that case too, you know, payback period can be used safely. Correct? So yes. if I ask, if I ask you what are like, obviously I'll be asking you this thing in the quiz and maybe in the midterms too, that in under what circumstances you will be using the payback period. So these are the three basic scenarios in which you will be using the payback period. The first scenario is when the person to whom or the investor or the manager or the business owner to whom I'm briefing this project proposal, he or she is not aware of the advanced financial management techniques. In that case, payback period can be used because it is easy to understand and it is easy to explain. Correct? Number two, if economy is stable, and the value or money is not being depreciated at very high rates. In that case too, you know, payback period can be used as a decision-making process, right? Thirdly, yes. thirdly, if investment period is too short, in that case too, you know, the, uh, the value of money will not be reduced much. Like within seven months, 10 months, 13 months, 14 months, uh, the, there will be very, you know, ignorable nominal effect on the 
amount of money. So in that case too, payback period can be used. Done? Yes, but okay. Sir. Sir? I'm sorry. Okay. I said Apia was clearing. Okay. One more thing. What is the okay? These are the scenarios in which I can use payback period. However, if I say that okay, keeping the purpose of your you know project selection method. Every project selection method have a different focus. Every project selection method has a different uh, you know, purpose. One of the project selection method, it tells you that if this is, the, you, this is your investment, how much profit or how much return you will get. If you want to know the amount of profit or return that you will get, in that case, we will be using that method, which we'll be studying in the next class. That is a net present value, right? The focus or the purpose of that method is to know the amount of return. Similarly, there's another method. We call it as PI. Again, we'll study this thing in the next lecture, inshallah. In that case, our focus is to know how much return we get per invested dollar. For example, if I invested 100 rupees against this 100 rupees, what will be my return? For every $1 invested or for every 1 rupee invested or for every 100 rupee that we invest, how much return I will get? And this is, this will tell you, uh, this, the, to understand this or to check this, we will be using another technique. So that means every technique has a different focus. What is the focus of payback period? The focus of payback period is we, if we want to know in how much time we will be able to recover the original investment, in that case, we will be using payback period. If time is your focus, actually, in high risk environments, in high risk environments, we actually want to recover the whole investment immediately as early as possible right so that because you know these things are too risky and we don't want to wait till long we are not sure about what would happen maybe from two years or three years from now so we want to get our amount back or recovered as early as possible in that case Payback period is the method that we use. So if I ask you, what in which, which scenario you will use the payback period, you would say, number one, when our focus is what? Our focus is or mm -hmm. our purpose is to know in how much time we will be able to recover the amount. In that case, payback period is the approach. If our focus is how much amount we will get back. In that case, we have other, other approaches that we'll study in the coming lessons. Here, if our focus is the time in which we'll be able to recover the original investment, in that case, payback period is the best technique. Correct? Yes, sir. Perfect. However, Perfect. however, there are three scenarios within that main major purpose. There are three scenarios in which payback period can be used. One, if the owner or the manager or the investor to whom I'm giving a briefing about this proposal, he or she is not aware of the time value of money or other financial concepts. If the economy is too stable, if the time period, investment period is too short. In all these three cases, you know, uh, using payback period is not an issue. Correct, G? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Yes, right. So now, why this is worst method? Because it it ignores the time value of money, right? You know, if the 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 uh there's huge depreciation or the time period is longer, in that case, uh, you know, ignoring time of value of money could be fatal. Actually, it will give you a very wrong results, very wrong results. You may assume that this is a project which we should go with, but 
because this is giving us profit. But if you will consider the time value of money, it might not be giving you any profit. OK, please add uh, one more aspect here. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that aspect in the coming classes because it will be too much for you now. OK, the reason it continues to be used is that it is easy to understand and explain. You know, on one side, we are saying it is the worst method, but still it is being used. Why? Because it is very easy to understand and explain. Very basic level method is this. So small businesses are especially likely to use payback method if the owners or managers are not well versed with the financial principles. Correct? Correct, sir. Now, yes, okay. sir. Now, would you prefer, would you prefer a payback period which is lesser, let's say two years the payback period, and in other project, there are two proposals that you are trying to compare. One is having a payback period of two years and other is having a pay payback period of three years. So which one would be better? Two, two years. Two years. Two years. Two years. Very right. Two years. So that means shorter the payback period, better it is, right? Yes. Yes. Now, did we did we talk about the mutually exclusive projects and the independent projects in the last lecture? No. Yes, sir. No, we yes. did, I guess. Yes, we sir. Did, and I, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I, I, and I told you that I'll, I'll be asking you this thing in the voice, obviously. So now, why didn't you ask me that, sir, are these mutually exclusive or are these independent projects? Why you said exactly, sir? The same point was just rising in my mind, but I just uh, said that maybe I'll be just asking later, and you just uh, noted it, sir. So why uh, uh, we are just ignoring no, the no. mutual? Or but but That's but okay. but uh, actually you are late, <laughs> right? Okay, like like what happened? That the questions that I phrased, the wording of that question was such that you chose this one. If I ask you which of these two is better, this was my question. Which of these two, you know, uh, is better, or which one of these two would you prefer? In that case, your answer was exactly correct. The one which is having the lesser right. payback period. That was my question. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, You're right. But if, but if I ask you which project or projects would you choose among these two? In that case, obviously, you will first ask me, sir, are these mutually exclusive or are these independent? Correct? Yes, sir. OK, so now. Uh, the, these are the terms that I already have explained. Investment is also known as initial cash outflow. Investments, cash flows, cash outflows, payments, expenses, disbursements are presented by a negative sign or a bracket and cash inflows, revenues, incomes, receipts, everything is uh, represented by a positive sign or actually with no sign with them we are already we are already done with it correct G? yes sir yes sir okay now these are two scenarios that you need to keep in mind number one we have an initial investment and a constant fixed amount of income this constant fixed amount of income is called as annuity right in financial terms, this is called as annuity, but this is just written for your understanding. I won't be asking you this thing in the exam because uh, the more you go into detail of uh, financial management concept, there's multiple uh, there, there are multiple terms that you'll you'll find there. So whenever we have initial a fixed initial investment or initial investment here, and after that we are getting fixed amount every month or every year. Like in our example, it was 2000, 2000, 2000 for the next seven years, right? So if the, we need, we earn or we receive a fixed constant amount, this is one scenario. And the other scenario is we have an initial investment and a constant fixed amount of saving. What does it mean? Look, I wish if I had a board today, but I don't have. 
there are two ways to tell you the things. Number one, just consider these two scenarios. Okay. Let's say I'm telling you that, sir or ma'am, if you will invest 10,000 with me, and this is a project in which we are purchasing a, a shop, let's say, a shop or an apartment with this amount, let's say, on day zero. If you will invest in this project every year, you will so get... unable to see the board, actually. Can others see? No, sir. No, 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 I can see. Yes, 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 I can see. Thank you, sir. Okay, so now uh, let's say this is the apartment that I have purchased or uh, this is a proposal on my table that if I purchase this apartment with this amount of $10,000, let's say whatever it is, every year I'll be able to earn, every year I'll be able to earn a rent or an income of 3000 Correct. Now, this is a scenario in which we are not having any future investment again or any future expense again. We only have to invest in that project once. And after that, there's no further cash outflow. There's no further expense. And we are getting a fixed income every year. This is one scenario. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, there could be an other kind of investment in which, let's say the same scenario, in which I may say that, sir, you have to invest, or ma'am, you have to invest 10,000 with me in this project. Let's say we are opening a school and we'll start with the Montessori section first. And after that, will extend it to the primary section and will keep increasing the number of classrooms and classes as we will grow. So we say, okay, fine. But let's say we have made an investment of 10,000 now. And in, in one year from day zero till end of first year, obviously there would be some expenses. We will be paying some bills. We will be you know, distributing the salaries of the teachers and their staff, correct? So that means after this investment, you still may have some expenses, correct? Or sometimes you make an investment, initial investment, plus, plus some installments you have to pay. Let's say every month after 10,000, you still have to pay an investment of 2000 here. Correct? Yes, sir. For example, I have purchased a car and I have given that car to a driver and I'm asking him or her to please use this car as cream or Uber, you know, or a cab and earn money. So this, this could be the scenario. I have made an upfront payment investment of 10,000, but still I'm making further payments here. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, obviously this during this time period, I will be earning as well. I will be earning as well. And let's say I'm earning 3000 every year, or let's say I'm okay. Make it bigger. Let's make it more profitable. I'm earning, let's say, 4,000 every year, right?
4,000 every year. And there are more number of years, obviously, uh, because of the you know space issue, I'm not writing it. So now, in this case, what will be my net saving? This is my income. This is my expense. So how much would be my saving? 2000. 2000, right? Sorry, obviously 2000, right? So now every year I will be saving 2000. Correct? Yes, so sir. now if you look at this scenario, if you look at this scenario, this scenario became almost very similar to the first scenario where every year I was saving a fixed amount of money. Right? Is it clear? This is almost the same scenario. Here, I'm every year I'm saving 2000 However, the only difference is here my investment is spread over the period of year. So after the initial investment, I still have some expenses with me. But at the same time, I'm making some earning. Done? Yes, sir. So in this case, but at the end of the day, when I check that 4,000 was my income and 2,000 was my expense. So at the end of the day, my net saving was 2,000. So I would say in how much time you would recover. So I can check that thing using the same formula, 10,000 divided by 2,000. So it would give me five years. Any doubts? No doubts. Right? Okay. So essentially speaking, these both mean the same. Even, even in this case too, in the first case too, there might be some expenses, but just to keep the thing simple, I might not tell you, okay, this is the expense and this is the income, rather than telling you these two things separately, I may say that, okay, this is the net saving. So you should not be concerned about what was the expense and what was the income. If I have told you this as a net saving, so I may not need to even tell you that what was my expense and what was my income, correct? For the payback period calculation, we are only concerned about the net saving that you are getting because this would be the amount that will actually tell you that in how much time you will be able to recover this investment. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so now these are the two scenarios that have been written here. We have an initial investment and after that a constant fixed amount of investment uh, income. In other case, we have an initial investment and a constant amount of saving. And how did we calculate saving? Income minus the expense. This is what we saw on the previous slide. In both cases, the formula to calculate payback period would be your initial investment divided by the annual cash saving. Any doubts? No doubt. No. Okay, now let's have a look on this. What is the payback period for an investment of 700,000 if the annual projected income is 200,000 uh, rupees for next five years? Now, please remember, this is your estimate. You know, you are studying the project selection methods. The project has not been started yet. So we are assuming that this would be the required investment. And hopefully, this would be our income for the next five years. So if I draw, or I want to, sorry, calculate this thing. 3.5. Very right. 3.5 years. Now, if I ask you, if I ask you that can you calculate things in years and months, then what it would be? Three years and six months? Yes, sir. 3.5 years yes. is actually three years and six, six months. months. 
Okay. So how to calculate that? How to calculate that? Like here, it was easier for you because 3.5 and 0.5 is actually half year, obviously. So you could very easily tell that this is six months. But if this payback period was 3. Point, let's say seven two years. Now, how would you calculate months in this case? The way of doing it is that the complete number of years that is three in our case, three years, and twelve. That is number of months in an year into fraction. And here in our example, the fraction is 0.5, right? Yes, sir. So 12 into 0.5 would give me six months. And if I want to check how or uh, how much uh, the time would be of 3.72 years, in that case, I would say three years into, oh, uh, sorry, and 12 multiplied by what? 0.72. This fraction. What is? What do we mean by fraction, by the way? You must have studied it in your one, two, and three classes. Yes, sir. What is meant by fraction? It's the part after the point, the decimal point. Yeah, but uh, the, this is this is the like in this number we are saying that is the part after the decimal point. But what a fraction is? Okay. Uh, this is numerator versus divided by denominator. Okay, technically, actually, we say that fraction is means part of something, right? A fraction means part of something. When I say this is one complete chocolate, let's say this is how I explain to my kids. This is complete chocolate, and you want half of the chocolate, half of the chocolate. That means one fraction or one part of these two parts. Out of these two chocolates, two parts of the chocolates, you are eating one part and you are giving the other part to your brother, right? So this is a fraction is similarly if. I'm sorry, I have to teach you these basic mathematics because people get confused about fractions. Whenever they say 3.7 is the answer and they write, three years and seven months. No, this seven is 0.7. This is not seven months. So let's say there are four parts. Out of these four parts, you are consuming three parts or you are eating three parts yourself. It means you are using three fractions of out of four. So that would be equal to 0.75 in this case. So similarly, when I say 0.5 years, it means half of the half of the year if i divide the year into two fractions out of that only one fraction that means six months here so the fraction part is taken and multiplied by 12 months because there are 12 months in a year so 12 into 0.5 it gives you six months correct g yes sir yes, okay sir. Yes, sir. So now this this was the first case that we just saw. Now let's have a look on this example. The initial investment required to start a project is 50 million here and the annual projected ex expenses. This is our guess. Obviously, this is done using a financial modeling techniques that are again beyond the scope of this project, but uh, this this course. But based on some methods, we forecast that these are the expect, expected expenses during coming four years, next four years. 80 million, 110 million, 120 million, and 100 million. Now you need to calculate the payback period if the annual projected incomes are 100, 130, 140, and 120 million respectively. So let's draw it on the number line or maybe on, in the table. Look, investment that is there, the initial investment on day zero is what? 50 million. 50 million. 50 million. First year investment or first year expense is 80 million. The next year expense is 110 million, then 120 million, and then 100 million in the fourth year, according to the values that are given here. 
Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what is? Sorry, just keep yourself mute, please. Okay. Now, what is the income or revenue that we are getting? Hundred million, one thirty, one forty, one twenty. Obviously, on day zero, we are not getting any income or any revenue. This is the day on which we invested. Obviously, we'll start earning this thing after one year. And that is 100 million, 130, 140, and 120. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, how much saving we are making? Obviously, the first year uh, or on the day zero, we are not making any saving. This is the complete investment that we made. However, here, if you see, for other years, we are making a saving of 20 million, isn't it? 100 million is my income, out of which 80 million is my expense. So 100 minus 80, the saving that I'm making is 20 million. Similarly, 130 is my income and 110 is my expense. And again, I'm saving the 20 million here. Correct? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Is, yes, sir. Is this the point? Yes, okay. So now, if I need to calculate the payback period, I can calculate very simply. Like what I would do on the top, I'm writing it 50 divided by 20. Because every year I'm getting the same fixed investment, or oh, sorry, income or saving. Isn't it? Yes, sir. So again, it would be what? 2.5? Yes, sir. 2.5, right? So, but practically, if you see, using a crude manual calculation, out of 50 million, I was able to recover 20 million here in the first year. So 50 minus 20, I'm still left with 30 million. And now, out of 30 million in the second year, I earned 20 more millions. So now I'm left with, 10 million here, correct? Out of this yes. 10 million, now, now this is the point that you need to understand. I was, I needed only 10 more million in the third year. I required only 10 more million, but I actually earned 20 million, correct? And because yes, of sir. that, I went in surplus. Actually, I not only recovered initial 10 million, but I was able to make a profit of 10 million as well. Is this point clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, so now if you see, Obviously, I was able to recover this 10 million somewhere between end of year two and before the start of year four. That means I was able to recover this 10 million somewhere between or in some part or some fraction of the third year. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, how to calculate that fraction? This is the way. Fraction, the amount that is required. In our case, the amount that we required or that was still there in my business, and I required 10 more million here to recover. Correct? Any doubts? No doubt. Out of this, we were able to recover 20 million. I was required to recover 10 million, but actually amount that I received is 20 million. Isn't it? Yes, so sir. 10, 10 divided by 20 million, I'm getting 0.5 as a fraction. That means my payback period was two complete years plus 0.5 part of the third year, right? Two years complete 
in which I was not able to recover, obviously, plus 0.5 or half of the year to three. So that means my payback period is 2.5 or two years and six months. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So now let's look at this. What is here? This is the same example. Yes. Right. So now if you see. We already see that 20 million is the annual savings. So why to do that manual calculation and subtracting things? Why not to use this formula? Because we know one thing. Whenever we have a fixed amount of investment and then we have a fixed amount of income or saving, we can use this formula safely. Correct? So in this case, it would be 50 billion, that is investment, divided by the annual cash saving, that is 20 million. So my payback period is 2.5 years or two years and six months. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. Done. So now, now we covered these two scenarios. The one, one scenario was we have an initial investment and constant fixed amount of income. And in other case, we had an initial investment and then fixed amount of savings. And savings means we subtracted expenses from the income. Correct? Yes, sir. In both cases, we can use this formula to calculate the payback period. One part is done. But what if we have some initial investment and then unequal income or unequal saving? In that case, we cannot use this formula. This is the thing or this is the uh, concept that I showed you at the start of this topic today, that there are two possible scenarios. In one scenario, we may have an investment and fixed incomes or savings. In second scenario, we saw that we had one fixed income, or sorry, one fixed investment. After that, we have we had different incomes, and for that, we had to draw that table. Do you remember it? Five, four, three, and yes. one was the case. Okay. So now let's look at this. What will be the payback period of an investment of 700,000 if the annual projected income for the next four years is 200, 300, 400, and 200? So now here we don't have a fixed amount of income, correct? Here, the income is different every year. So that means we cannot use the same formula. Here, we have to draw the table. And if we look at the table, what is the investment or expense here? What is the income? What is the saving? What is the remaining investment? If you look at this, here my initial investment is 700,000. Are you awake, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. So now, if the 700,000 is the initial investment, and obviously there would be no income on day zero. Obviously, it's my first day on which I've invested. And what would be my saving? Obviously, no saving. It is a negative. This is the amount that I have invested. And this is the amount that I still have to recover. Then, in year one, obviously, there was no further investment. And we had an income of 200,000. So what would be my saving? Look, how do we calculate saving? This is my income minus expense. any expense. So here we don't have any expense. So all of it is my saving, correct? 
Yes, sir. Yes. So this is my saving. So now out of this 700,000, we have recovered 200,000 here. So 500,000 is still left in the business. In next year, again, there is no investment and we are only having a saving or an income and all of it is my saving, that is three. So now out of this five, I was able to recover an other 300,000 here. So I still have, or I'm left with 200,000 in my business. So next year again, the same thing happens, no expense. This is my income and all of it is my saving because I don't have any other expense. So this is my saving. So out of this two, I had to recover 2,000 here, but 200,000, but I recovered 400,000 here. So now what happened? Again, not only I was able to recover this amount, but I also made some profit, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. okay. so that means I was able to recover my initial investment somewhere after the second year and before the start of fourth year. That means somewhere during the third year, correct? Now, can someone tell me how would I calculate that some part or some fraction of the third year? Remaining investment divided by uh, saving for the next year. Yeah, for the next year, right? Please remember, this was the amount that I had to recover. But this is the amount that I actually received the next year. By the end of year two, I was left with 200,000 still stuck in the business. And I just wanted that I need to recover this 200,000. But actually, I recovered 400,000. So what happened here? Amount required that so, is remaining us to be recovered. Yes, sir. So we, we just we just recovered two hundred thousand uh, in in six months, and six uh, months, that's yeah. why it it would be at zero point five. Yes, six months. Zero point five, right? So what would be my payback period? My payback period complete years that are two, until this point I was not able to recover but a fraction of the third year, some part of third year during which I recovered and I calculated that part using this. So my payback period is two years, 2.5 years or two years and six months. Any doubt? No doubt. No, sir. Okay, now have a look at this. What's this? Can you see it? Initial investment 50 billion. Yes, sir. Then 80 million. Go in your lakhair sir. 110 million, <laughs> 120 million, and 100 million, right? And here I had a different incomes. What happened here? Loss of 10 million. Net income. In the, no, in, in the in the in the first case, obviously we are having remaining an amount. Income. The remaining investment will be sixteen again. But in second year, if you observe in second year, I invested other one ten million, and out of which I recovered or I earned hundred million. So again, another ten million was stuck in the business. Correct? Isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now let me calculate this thing here. I invested 50 million in the business or in the project, or I will invest 50 million in the project. Out of this 50 million, I was able or I will be able to recover 10 million here. And now the remaining investment is 40 million. This is the amount that I have to recover from the business yet. However, in the next year, unfortunately, I was not able to make any saving. In fact, I had to invest other 10 million in the business. So that means now 
my investment or the amount that I still have to recover from the business has again gone back to 50 million. Correct? Yes, sir. So next year I made a saving of 30 million and out of this 50 million, I was able to recover 30 million and I'm still left with 20 million now. And in the fourth year, I was expecting or I was hoping that I have to recover 20 million, but fortunately I recovered more than that and I recovered 50 million, correct? Yes, sir. So here my profit, actually I saved 30 million by the end of this. I not only was able to recover my original investment of 50 million plus the 10 million that I invested further, and I recovered all this, plus I was able to save 30 million at the end of the day. Fine. Yes, sir. Yes, so now, sir. now how to calculate the payback period? Obviously, payback period is somewhere after the third year, right? After the third year. And during some part of the fourth year, I was able to recover this thing. So now it's not 0.5, I guess. Anna? So now yes. I have to calculate how to calculate fraction. It was 20 billion that I had to recover, 20 million. But I was able to recover 50 million. Actually, I recovered 50 million. So my fraction is how much? 0.4. So 4, sir. My payback period is either 3.4 years or 3 years and 4.8 months. Now, how did I calculate 4.8 months? 12 multiplied by a fraction. 0.8 fraction multiplied by 30. 0.4. Uh -oh. no, no, if, this, if you want achha, to calculate uh, in, in days. Yes, what if we want to calculate the number of days as well? In your case, yes. In that case, I would say three years, four months, and how many days? 0.8 multiplied by 30, right? Okay, now we, we are done with the basic level of calculations. Now try to, let's try to consolidate this concept further. Now strengths and weaknesses. The first strength is, it is very easy to use and understand. This is basic subtraction as a matter of fact, if you see. We invest something and then we start subtracting whatever we have recovered. And at the end of the day, we say, okay, this, this is the time period during which we were able to recover the whole amount. It can be used as a measure of liquidity. You see, whenever you uh, invest something and in return, we get some cash inflows. Obviously, this is all about cash flows. At the end of the day, we, we come to know that this is the amount that we have in cash with us. Correct? This is the amount in cash that we have. What is liquidity, by the way? Sir, uh, liquidity is basically uh, the cash in hand. or uh... The cash in hand. Yeah, yeah, you're right. For, for example, let's say, let's say, inshallah, Let's say if I have a property, a, a factory or a store, a plaza or a mall, shopping mall worth maybe let's say 500 million, right? And inshallah, sir, inshallah. No, thank you so much, sir. Yes, I, I was excited. Oh, no, sir, no, no. No, no, sir, no, 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 Okay, so now let's say if I have may you may you may your dream come true. Sir, inshallah, aapke saath mein business karunga, will earn. Okay, now let's say if this is if this is the case, five hundred million. This is the worth of this, and I have let's say um, uh, another asset of of maybe hundred million more, and Unfortunately, or fortunately, some of you come to me and ask me, sir, can you give me 10,000 rupees? And I say, I'm really sorry. I don't have any cash with me. So to give you those 10,000, 
rupees will i sell out this property or this business or this whatever factory is with me no oh, we, i don't have anything in liquid cash available to me right so in businesses we need to know apart from this fixed asset we also need to know that what will be the state of liquid cash that is available to me because if you are coming to me and asking me sir can you invest 10000 with me i would say yes i have a lot of you know assets with me but i don't have liquid cash with me so payback period calculations you see they help you or they tell you that at any given period of time how much liquid cash you will have with you that liquid cash actually tells you or allows you to make further investments correct i will not be selling yes, yes, out sir. my asset to make further investment rather or to make further purchases i'll be interested in knowing the amount in cash that is available to me similarly easier to forecast the short term acha another strength is if you are focusing on short term investment you remember the three scenarios in which we use payback period one of them was that if the investment period is very short in that you know we can calculate or we can use the payback period safely because for a shorter period of time the amount or the worth of money will not be reduced that much and moreover it is easy for me to forecast about near time if i ask you what would happen in next 10 years obviously it is difficult for me to estimate however i can estimate things about near future so payback period is a good tool when you are talking about a shorter period of time because you can forecast very easily for next couple of years is it okay yes sir but the weakness is that yes, is does not account for the time value of money factor this is a very big flaw in this for this there are some advanced or modified version of payback period like the discounted payback period however that is beyond the scope of this program this this course actually because we are studying here project management right but if you you see the finance management books there there's a concept we call it as discounted payback period and that actually addresses this problem but in its original form the payback period does not address or does not account for the time value of money factor correct in any of the calculation yes, we did not calculate the present value of any of the future cash flows similarly an other problem is it does not consider the cash flows beyond payback period now let me explain this thing from this example i actually added this example here with the same intention can you see in year 2 we had to make again some investment right now yes sir now what happens or what would we do like here in this case sorry in this case we calculated payback period right and our payback period was this this was the time but what after that we just ignore what is happening after the payback period it is quite possible that after this third year we again might have to invest further in it and things might go in negative again isn't it yes sir but we just ignore this thing payback period ignored payback period ignores everything that is that happens or that might happen after the payback period correct so this is another flaw or an other weakness of this method yes, it does not consider cash flows flows beyond the payback period then there's no cut off period that means 
what value of payback period is acceptable? Let's say I tell you, sir, this is a proposal. This is a project proposal, ma'am. This is a project proposal and its payback period is three years. Now, is it okay? I'm sorry. Is this payback period okay for you? It depends. It depends. There's no cutoff limit. There's no specific value using which we can decide, okay, this is the point above this is not acceptable and below this would be acceptable. Like if you will study the next techniques, that is NPV. In that we say, if my NPV is positive, that means greater than zero, we'll accept the project. If my NPV is negative, we'll reject the project. Now, if my NPV is positive 5,000, obviously I'll accept it. If my NPV is negative 100, I'll reject it. No matter what the case is, there's a clear cut criteria established for acceptance or rejection of a project. We'll study this thing in the next class, right? Similarly, in the next class, we'll also study the profitability index, right? PI. And the cutoff or the criteria for selection of reject or rejection of project is very clear. If your PI is greater than one, accept it. If your PI is less than one, reject the project, right? So there is clear, there are clear cutoff limits for decision making in case of other techniques. However, in case of payback period, there's no cutoff period. That is how much payback period would be acceptable for you. For some people, two years is okay. For another person, three years could be okay. For another person, even four years could be okay. Right? For example, if a person, like most of you are jobians, right? Are you there, by the way? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, please. More of you are jobians, right? Jobians are reluctant in making business investments. Yes, sir. So what, so what they do, they they would go to some real estate person and would tell him or her, yeah, can we get some plot on installments? And the person, the real estate person or that dealer would ask you that, sir, do you want immediate return or you are okay with the, you know, uh, or it's a long-term investor? And you would say, yeah, I don't want any immediate return. I just want that whatever savings I get, I just keep dumping them here and I can wait maybe for next five, six, seven months or seven years. I just want that once my kids would go to university or I would require extra expenses at that time, so I will be having some asset with me. So in this particular approach, even six, seven years, payback period is fine for you, isn't it? But yes, if yes. you, if in case of business investment, we don't wait that long. We want immediate returns, right? So the cutoff period, the acceptable payback period, it is subjective. It would depend upon various circumstances, uh, on your circumstances and upon your, on your need actually, right? Or you may, do you have extra amount to, spend somewhere and then wait for years what is the situation in the economy and blah 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 right so there are many factors based on which will decide if a payback period is acceptable to you or not correct correct yes sir right so now we just to conclude this lesson further we still have a couple of practice questions actually there are different ideas in those questions that you need to understand, right? And then I'll conclude. Now, look at this one. What will be the payback period? Now, I want all of you to be attentive, please. What will be the payback period for an investment of this if the annual projected incomes for the next four years are? Look, I have shown you a long table which has got how many columns? One, two, three, four, and five, right? In your exam, don't use this table. I'll I'll tell you 
just use this simple table which has got only three columns is it clear yes sir yes sir. yes sir because because th that is a longer table and there i just wanted to show you certain points that this is your expense this is your income and this is your saving right so that's why i added these columns separately but in exam this is the easiest way add one table or one column of time period other column of cash flows and third column of remaining investment cumulative or whatever you want to uh, give a name to this so now on day zero this is the initial investment that we made obviously this is the amount that we have to recover on day or during year one this is the amount that i got as an income so can you observe the difference for cash outflow like this is cash flows for cash outflow i put brackets here for cash inflows i'm not putting in uh, brackets uh, with with this 100000 so now how much amount is left still in the business 900 in next year i'm earning or i'm saving 300 and i still have 600000 here so again in third year now i had to recover 600000 but i was able to recover 700,000, correct? So yes, sir. here, yes, sir. here, this is the profit that we made, but we ignore whatever happens after the payback period. So how to calculate the fraction? You already know that 600,000 were expected, but out of which uh, I actually received 700,000. So my fraction is 8 point, uh, sorry, 0 0.857. So the payback period would be 2.857 years right please note out somewhere this is the method that you will use for your exam purpose right you don't need to draw all okay. this example and how to calculate months obviously 8.57 multiplied by 12 this part it will give you months 10.284 months and if i need to calculate days Obviously, I would say two years, 10 months, and 0.284 multiplied by 30. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay, now this is another concept that you need to tell me. I mean, you need to look into. You want to install an ice cream machine with an expected cost of this much, both Maggie here, but with an expected cost of this much, right? Having a useful life of four years, you are purchasing this ice cream machine, a second hand ice cream machine. Its useful remaining life is four years. The net annual cash inflows are given below. Year one, this, year two, this, and so on. Another way of drawing that table is amount to be recovered. What is my initial investment? This is the amount that I had to 60, recover, 60,000. Out of this, I recovered in first year, I recovered 15,000, right? And this is still there, that is to be recovered. In next year, I recovered 16,500 out of it, and now I'm left with 28,500 and so on, correct? So at the end yes, of sir. year four, at the end of year four, I had, let's say, 9615 with me, right? And which is actually my profit or my earning at the end of the day after four years. Now, what is the payback period here? The payback period is 3.52 years, correct? Yes, sir. Now, will you, the question asks you that will you, let's say the, this question is asking you to determine the payback period, but if I ask you, will you go for purchase of this machine or not? No, sir. No. No. Why not? Four years, Four years. Four years 9,000 years. Probably not, sir. Why not? 
saving this much amount is it okay for you or not however i told you payback period doesn't focus on the amount that you recover here my decision criteria is time factor only is it clear yes sir yes sir so for that in case of payback period calculations you will not account for the amount that you are getting if you are concerned about the amount that you are going to save for that there's another technique that will study in the coming class correct here our focus is just the time period now are you okay with this time period or not okay sir in that case yes, i know sir. the useful life of the machine is 4 years and before this machine would expire and before this machine would go dead i will be able to recover all my investment and after that i will make some profit yes you can debate about one thing and that is after that we are only left with 5 months or some days so will that amount of time enough for you it is subjective right somebody may wish that okay fine i am okay with it as far as machine returns me its original investment i'm okay with it right and for some person you know he or she may say that well i want to recover all this investment within 2 years and then start making the profit so that is the one of the flaws of the payback period or one of the weaknesses of payback period that it doesn't there is no clear cut criteria based on which you would say this payback period is okay for me but as far well as like generally generally speaking i would say that okay since the payback period is less than its useful life so i'll select this project i'll purchase this machine is it clear i'm going to ask this question too i'm going to ask this question as well it's clear it's clear right so generally speaking you yes. expect to recover your cash investment within this years this much time so now evaluation because the cash is expected to be recovered in less than 4 years the invested might be acceptable obviously if the balance at the end of four year obviously this this is something not to be uh, you know considered in the payback period however we are clear about one thing and that is in case in case if the payback period please note it down i'm going to ask this thing in the quiz in the coming quiz actually that we'll have in the coming class if we are going to if if we get a payback period of let's say 4.1 years will you accept this project or not no no i'll not i'll not purchase this machine why because you are not recovering your amount even yes yes i'm not even recovering the original amount that i'm spending on this machine and before that my machine would go dead right so this is another view or lens from which you need to look payback period into correct rest all yes, of these practice yes, question you can do yourself and that's it but the last point that i just mentioned